Hello and a warm welcome to our webinar on ISC 6364, part 8.1. With this webinar, we would like to bring you closer to the international standardization work of ISC 6364, part 8.1, which deals with the topic of energy efficiency. This publication is processed internationally in the Technical Committee of ISC, TC64, in the Maintenance Team 41. At the German level, this standard is known as DIN VDE 0100, part 801, which is published and reflected in the German Commission for Electrical, Electronic and Information Technologies, DKE Committee K221. The K221, with its subcommittees, is principally responsible for the development of standards for safety and the related questions for electrical systems in buildings. In particular, the committee also has to ensure the coordination between these standards and the standards of the equipment to be set up in the range less or equal to 1000 volt AC and less or equal to 1,500 volt DC. The committee is also responsible for the standards with pilot function, which deals with protection against electrical shock for both systems and equipment. We welcome Felix Fremming. Felix Fremming is employee at Siemens AG in the totally integrated power department since 2015. In a 30 minutes, very interesting presentation, Mr. Fremming will illustrate the need of international standards and shows us why it is so important and valuable to support and participate in standardization work. Mr. Dirk Bartel, standardization manager at DKE since 2009, is primarily responsible for the K221 and thus your contact person for the DIN VDE 0100 series of standards. We would like to point out that this webinar has been recorded. Questions can be sent directly to Mr. Fremming by email. If you are interested in participating in standardization work, please contact Mr. Bartel. So now we wish you interesting insights in the world of standards. Hello and welcome to the webinar for the IEC 60364-8-1. My name is Felix Frömming. I am from Siemens, especially from the department Totally Integrated Power. We support electrical engineers in their daily work, so in the electrical planning and with tender specifications. As this standard is about the planning phase, um, I'm really interested in giving you an overview of the standard make it a little bit more popular and maybe also inspire you to have a look at it and maybe use it in your daily work. Here is an overview of the 60364 and their different parts. In this webinar we will be talking about part 8, so energy efficiency, so the part 8-1, which somehow is different from the other parts that you already know because there is no safety included and somehow this is also something that makes it hard to um, make this popular and to convince the people um, in all different countries that it's important to have a look at the standard and um, really to fulfill this standard. On this page I have collected all topics that belong to the standard. Basically, the, st the, the standard defines different measures that you have to take and for every single measure you will get a certain amount of points. At the end you will have a sum of points and this sum will indicate which efficiency class your building will have. I have sorted them somehow different than the standard. Um, I have sorted them uh, in, in four parts. So we have the blue part, which basically is that every measure of this part is um, somehow related to the consumption. So it's related to the total consumption of the building or it's related to any consumption. 
Then we have the transformer, so the red part, which is basically the location of the transformer, efficiency, working point, and so on. We have a part with power quality, so um, with harmonics, for example, and we have a part that I call building automation, which somehow is a little bit different uh, and maybe also a little bit strange because we talk about electrical planning, but in this case, we also need to consider building automation. So coming now to the content, the real content of the standard, which is divided into four chapters, I would say. So we have an initial installation, energy management, performance maintenance, and the fourth part is basically two parts in one. We have power monitoring and a bonus part, um, which includes renewables and storage possibilities inside your building. Here you can see which measures are included in the initial installation part. On the right side, you can see the amount of points which every measure can uh, give you. As you can see, it's divided in three rows. So we have the industry buildings, we have commercial buildings, and we have infrastructural buildings, which means depending on your building type, you can gain different points. And this is what you will see on the following slides as well, that sometimes there's a difference uh, in between which building uh, that you are planning. But sometimes, as you can see here, for example, in the voltage drop, um, it's no difference between the buildings. The standard itself also has a part for residentials, but uh, in this webinar, I won't talk about the residentials because uh, it's a small part and it's, it's totally different from this. So therefore, um, I would suggest that if you're interested in residentials, you go and uh, read the part about the residentials in the standard by your own. So the first slide is about the determination of energy consumption. This means the standard wants you to measure your loads not only in the in-feed, but really going down in your distribution and uh, measure different loads by its own. And here you will get your points depending on which amount of load compared to the total consumption of your building are you measuring. And there is the, the important point. So we are in the planning phase. There is no building at all at the moment but you already need to know what your loads are consuming. So um, it's not only about the power, but it's about the energy. So therefore you will probably need somehow maybe synthetic load curves and you will need some patterns uh, which indicate how your loads are working. And this will be something for the future, which will be very important um, if you want to fulfill this. And what you can see here in uh, this diagram, that there are different points um, for the different building types. So for industry and infrastructure, you are able to get a maximum of seven points and for commercial only six points if you get out everything. So um, this you will see on different other slides as well. So now we come to the location of the main distribution board. Therefore, we will start with an example, as you can see here. This should simulate some kind of area. Maybe it's an industrial area. You have uh, different sub-distribution boards, which uh, should be the infi of different buildings. You have some loads. Um, you have your main distribution board and your transformer. And now the standard wants you to find the best spot for the lowest losses on your energy transport. So you can choose out of two different methods. You can choose the average root length, which basically does what it's called. So you calculate the average length of your cable so the shorter of course the better because this is where you have the most or your losses uh, in this type of method and then you can have the barycenter method where you try to find the right spot 
um, based on x, y or x, y, z coordinates that you need for every load and for your main distribution board. So here I've written down the, the formulas how to calculate those two methods. So as you can see for the average root length, you take every single cable wave from your main distribution board down to your load, multiply it with the energy consumption of this load squared and divide it by the total consumption also squared. And then you will end up getting an average root length for your whole installation. For the Berry Center method, uh, it's, it's a similar way. So you have your x, y coordinates, for example. So you first calculate the x, um, also taking all x coordinates, multiply it with the energy divided by the energy, and the same for the y coordinates. And later on, you will have the most far load, which gives you a distance. And um, for that, you kind of take a circle around the calculated spot, so the, the optimum spot for your main distribution board. And when the, the real main distribution board, where you placed it, is inside the circle, and uh, yeah, of course, uh, the nearer to the optimum, uh, the better you can get your points from there. Just to give you an example of the cable length, I have uh, done a single line for this example I showed you. So really based on what the cable weighs on this campus should be. And um, here you can see how the cable way is calculated. So you really start from the main distribution board down to your load and do this for every load. So then you can uh, in the end calculate the average root length. The same I have done for the Berry Center method. So um, every load and the main distribution board has gotten x, y coordinates. So I just calculated x, y because um, of course I don't know the, the z coordinates if I just have this plan. Um, so therefore it's, it's much easier to just take x, y coordinates. And um, here you can see some examples. So really, I really measured this on the plan. So one centimeter uh, equals 10 meters. And then you get your um, x, y coordinates. And therefore, the Berry Center method, you can see it here, um, would suggest to put the Berry Center or your main distribution board where I have uh, marked it here. Basically, as you can see, it's what you probably already expected. So the Berry Center is somehow in the middle of the paper. Yeah. So um, of course, if you think of x, y coordinates, this means uh, this would be like um, the direct way from the Berry Center to the load. And that's also, in my opinion, the weakness of this method. So because you think of the cables are really direct going to the load. And uh, usually that's not the way they are going because you will have your cable ways, your dedicated cable ways, where you have to put your cable. And of course, it's um, sometimes in a building, for example, there is no other way. So maybe on such an area, you um, could have alternative ways, but in, an, in a building, um, there usually is no way to have other cable ways. So um, that's basically, in my opinion, the, the biggest weakness of this method. Here you can see the results of those two methods. So we have 182 meters of average cable length. And for the Berry Center method, we have to put this into re relation or, um, with the farthest load and take this as somehow a circle around the calculated Berry Center. And if the real main distribution board where it is placed, if this is inside the circle and within the circle, of course, as close as possible to the calculated Berry Center method, then you will get a relation. So in this case, we have 0 0.74. 
And this means that um, we are, as you can see on the right side in the diagram, we are outside of the scope. So therefore for the Berry Center method, in this case, you would get zero points. And for the average root length, um, as we are below 200 meters, we would, depending on the building, get between three and five points. So in this particular case, the average root length would be the better solution. But of course, there can be other um, areas, other examples uh, where the Berry Center method could be better. So therefore, it probably makes sense if it's not too much work to try to calculate both methods, compare them, them and uh, take the better one for you. So um, this is somehow also where you can uh, try to optimize um, in your total um, solution which energy efficiency class your building has. Of course, it's not that much, uh, much uh, change, but um, in this case, it could be up to five points. So maybe this will be the part changing your efficiency class by one. So this slide is related to the two methods I showed you before, um, because you need to know how much of your total consumption did you consider in the calculation for your main distribution board so that you have a little bit of space to, to try and to maybe play around a little bit with your solution to find the, the best solution for you. So um, really, as you can see, you can leave out up to 10% of your consumption that you don't need to consider for the Berry Center or for the average load, uh, average uh, length method. So there you can optimize and uh, don't need to take into account every load. So if you have, for example, some loads that are far away, maybe for uh, high water pumping or something like this, there's no need to consider those those and uh, if you think about it those wouldn't be uh, very helpful for the points that you can gain but of course you're free of free to choose um, whether you want to take into account every load or not here we want to calculate an average voltage drop uh, inside of your building or your area this means you take into account up to 80% or at least 80% that way um, of your total annual consumption. And um, with this, you calculate the average voltage drop. And basically that's it. So it would be needy if you have a software, for example, that gives out every uh, voltage drop for every load. So with this, you can just calculate the average and see where you land. And of course, as in the measure before, there's no need to take into account every load, but at least 80% that you can gain points here. And as you can see in the diagram, there is no difference between the different building styles. So for every building, there is the same rating. Now we're talking about the efficiency of transformers. So the maximum efficiency of transformers, as we are usually talking about the EU, we have to consider the regulation, which we have since July 2015. This lists all transformers and uh, tells you which minimum efficiency the transformer has to has, have. And uh, therefore, we will get at least two points. And as there is no difference between the buildings, um, uh, there will be no change if you have an industrial building or infrastructural building. And um, from 2021 on, so next year, there will be even stricter rules uh, coming from this regulation. What is very interesting, I will show you on the next slide. Here you can see the two stages coming from the regulation, so from 2015 and for next year. As you can see, the 99%, so the two points will be given for every of these transformers. Maybe, first of all, um, I started with 630 uh, 
TVA transformer because I think the, the smaller ones are not that interesting for buildings. Um, what I wanted to state is, as you can see, two points, uh, this is uh, no problem, but the three points is for some um, transformers nearly impossible because the mark is 99.5%. And as you can see here, only the oil immersed transformers um, have this high efficiency. So for dry transformers, there is, at least according to the regulation, there is uh, no part where you can gain the maximum amount of points. Of course, if you think of it, it's only one point that you won't get because the two points with 99% you will have um, no matter which transformer you are using, as le at least as it is fulfilling the regulations. So the first part is already done. Now we are coming to energy management. Here you can see the different measures that are included in this. Um, and as you can see, there are some measures that really give a huge amount of points and some are only one point. So um, as before, I will only be talking about a few of those. So a huge amount of points can be gained by having an energy management system, which of course uh, should be included in a building where you want to have a high efficiency uh, and high efficiency class. So therefore, in this case, you will be asked how many loads are managed or interfaced, but basically this should be uh, the same in the end, um, via an energy management system. And here you can see if at least 90% of your loads are managed or interfaced, you will get 12 points if you're inside an industry building or a commercial building. So huge amount and um, of course a lot of work to do because such an energy management system needs to be installed you need to have all the connections to your loads and so on but uh, basically this is something uh, where you can see what the the core or the goal of this standard is uh, really to measure to interface and maybe also um, to control and manage loads so this is something I've talked about in the beginning of this presentation. Um, there are some parts where it's really needed to have knowledge of the um, building automation. So in this case, you need to know something about the uh, HVAC control. So is there a temperature control? Is it maybe at room level? Um, and for full points, is it at room and time level or is it room controlled and time controlled the temperature and um, usually you should get those information but um, this is nothing a electrical planner usually has to deal with and now we are coming to the third point the performance maintenance here you can see the different measures included in this. And um, of course, it's a lot of how is the performance? Um, how do you control this? How often do you control this? And therefore we will start with the frequency. So um, the more often you control your performance of your building, the more points you get. If you think of an energy management system where you have uh, the, the control over a lot of loads, where you um, interface a lot of loads or maybe also all loads, then um, of course this is somehow a performance verification or um, a, the control of your performance and somehow on a daily basis because um, this can be 
all automated. So um, there can be set values uh, where you get a note or something or an alert um, when your performance isn't going the way you uh, have preset this. So in my opinion, this should be a daily um, verification. Other verifications are probably something where you really have people controlling this. Um, so if there is no energy management system in your building, then you will have maybe a quarterly or monthly control of this. So this is the second part for transformers. So in this case, you really need to know what is the working point of my transformer and what is the optimum working point of my transformer. And then you need to be inside of a range of plus minus 20% and then you're good to go. So um, if you have more than one transformer, then of course you need to have the relation between those transformers that are outside of the scope. So outside of this uh, plus minus 20% in relation to the total amount of transformers and therefore if you are below 20 percent um, of your transformers that are outside of the scope then you get this point this one point and um, otherwise not so really easy um, the only problem in my opinion is that um, you need to know the working point of your transformers in this case, it's somehow static, um, but in reality, it's not static. So therefore, this can only be yeah, something that you assume. So you assume that your transformer will be working at this point, but basically over the day, the transformer will be switching, depending on the load, of course, the working point. And um, yeah, you will be inside and outside of the scope uh, a lot of times during the day. But uh, as this is a planning standard, of course, you need to assume which will be your working point and are you inside the scale, uh, scope and then you are good to go and get the point. Coming to the last um, part of the standard, the power monitoring and bonus. Here you can see those are basically two parts. So we have the power monitoring, which includes power factor and harmonics. And we have the bonus part, which is including the renewables and the storage. So starting with the power factor, as you can see, um, if you reach the 0 0.95 with the cosine phi, then you get the maximum amount of point. However, if you have a contract with your grid operator and uh, your grid operator tells you to have, uh, I don't know, a cosine phi of 0 0.9 and you reach this, then of course you're good to go and uh, take the maximum amount of points uh, according to this diagram. Um, the harmonics, that's a topic um, which I find very difficult. Um, because if you think of this is still the planning phase, um, then you somehow need to calculate your harmonics. And um, to calculate this, you of course need to get the uh, information for every load, every device that you want to install. And somehow, even if you get those data, it's hard to calculate this because you don't need know when are those devices running, um, which harmonics maybe start canceling each other and uh, what, will, uh, what will be the sum uh, of your harmonics. But uh, somehow you need to have this calculation because you want to get the points here. Um, and in the end, you're free to choose which harmonics or which, which type you want to rate. So do you want to rate the THDI or do you want to rate the THDU, so the current or the voltage? Um, I'm not quite sure how practical this is to do, but um, in the end, of course, this is something that needs to be fulfilled. And um, 
yeah, in the end, just start a documentation. How did you calculate it? What are your assumptions? And uh, then start rating this. And in the end, um, if you have written down this, you're uh, good to go and take the points that you calculated. So going on with the renewables, as I said, this is the bonus part. So um, those are additional points that you can reach. Um, but if you don't reach them, it's still possible to get the highest efficiency class. So this somehow gives you the possibility to get points that you missed somewhere else. Um, if you take a look at it, um, it's yeah a wide range that uh, is uh, going to be rated. So uh, starting with 5% up to 80%, which means um, the produced energy of your photovoltaics, for example, um, in relation to your annual consumption of the building. So again, as with different other measures, you first need to know, of course, the total consumption of your building, which uh, you should know because you need it for a lot of other measures as well. But um, additionally, you need to know what your renewable source will be generating. So if you have photovoltaics, for example, you need to have some calculation where you say, okay, um, this will be the amount of energy they will generate over one year. Um, then you need to put this in relation and as you can see uh, up to 80% for the maximum of five points. I don't know how realistic this is. Um, if you think of um, infrastructure buildings or commercial buildings, this maybe could be possible depending on the roof and so on that uh, you could um, use for this. But if you think of industrial applications, I think this is nearly impossible. But of course, um, this is uh, somehow the bonus and you can try to get some points. But if not, then not. So this is the last measure of the standard. So the energy storage, this is directly linked to the renewable sources because you're only allowed to take this measure and to get the points if you have uh, installed renewable energy because the intention uh, behind this is that you use the storage to store your renewable energy uh, and in this way to maximize the consumption and the usage of your renewables. Um, the, the calculation is in this case that you take the maximum power storage source and relate it to the total consumption divided by 360. So basically to the total consumption of one day. And if you are between the 1% and 10%, then you get uh, one up to three points. Um, it's not that much points. And if you think of the investment that such a storage will be, then of course the, the relation is are not too nice if you compare it to other measures, but in the end, this is the bonus. So um, yeah, if you reach this and you're really trying to get your green building, then here you can get some more points. So, and after all those measures, um, of course I didn't show each measure, but um, somehow a, a good cho choice of it. Um, you will get your energy efficiency class um, here divided in the three buildings. And you can see, of course, there are some measures uh, where are differences between the three building types. But in the end, the difference between those three is not that much. So we are talking about three or two points difference. And as you can see, the different classes aren't that much away from each other, but still there are some differences. And sometimes, of course, uh, two or three points will make the difference between the energy efficiency classes. So in the end, it's not too easy to reach a good class, but if you have uh, modern planning and uh, try to, 
to uh, look into the future by planning your building, then it should be possible to reach efficiency class two or three. And um, this by just taking the measures and uh, just doing the same planning as always, but by uh, having a good documentation of this. And basically it's not too hard I think to gain the points and to have a nice efficiency class, but of course there's something that you need to do in addition. So basically that's it. Um, thanks for your attention. I hope I could give you an overview what the standard is about. Um, of course, I hope that um, I caught your interest in this topic and you will be using and uh, maybe also going into some details of the standard and maybe start working with it in the next time. If there are some questions, of course, feel free to contact me or contact the IEC. And um, yeah, thanks for watching and have a nice day.